So today we're going to be talking about sweat. Yes, you heard right, sweat. Just kidding. Well, kind of. This is me being weird. Embrace the weird. Cheese. What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Fabulous Fridays. My name is Lizette and this is my channel of Super I Feel Is. So today I was inspired to share with you my fitness journey. If you didn't hear my first video where I spoke about my 10 uh, facts about me and getting to know me, I said that I'd be sharing my new found passion for uh, fitness and eating healthy. So I'm going to try to cut it short as much as I possibly can and well here I go I'll try to stay so that it flows I'm just gonna kind of share from my heart and what it's been and why I became passionate about it and I'm gonna try to not be all over the place okay so uh, growing up I'd say that I was on the leaner side so I was always pretty much skinny. I was your typical teenager where yeah, I'd eat your hamburger here and there, but I wasn't like obsessed with eating hamburgers all the time and like pizza and stuff like that. I've never been into like breads or pastas too much. Uh, but my weakness, my Achilles heel are chips. Chips are life. Oh my gosh. I love hot cheeto fries. I love chips with salsa. Green salsa is life. Oh my gosh, I love green salsa. It is so good. So chips and salsa are definitely my weakness. Popcorn with tapatio, don't like, don't shoot it out if you haven't tried it. Popcorn with tapatio and some limon on there. Sit down on your couch, watch a movie. Oh, it's so good. All the way through my early 20s, I mean, I never ate super bad. You know, I'd have my typical junk food but not like super mega ultra bad I of course holidays I'm Latina so are you talking about pozole tamales oh my gosh menudo cueritos you know el chocolate de la abuelita con tu panecito all that stuff okay I'm going off on tangent so in my early early to late 20s I was working at a restaurant so my husband and I, he also worked at the same restaurant. He still works at the same restaurant. So we would always have late dinners. So having late dinners is not the best thing because here it is 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, sometimes even 1 a.m. and we're eating dinners. And we're not talking like a small dinner, like we'd go full on meals. And we'd also, you know, enjoy a drink. It's been a long day, let's relax. I'll have a glass of wine, I'll have a beer. But um, I'd say, Mm, probably our early, I don't know, like around 22, we started liking beer. I think for me it was around 22, maybe 23. I started liking beer, so we started enjoying it together. We weren't, we're not alcoholics or anything like that, but we started enjoying beer, so we'd have a beer here and there for dinner. And so, like, that went on for a while, and still, you know, enjoying my chips, c caving into my chip uh, love of chips and popcorn and I wasn't being super active like I'd be active sporadically like I get excited like yeah I'd get excited with friends and we'd go you know to the gym once or twice I'd get a buddy pass and then they'd come over and we'd do a few things or we'd go for a run or I think we, I went to like a Zumba dance once here so I'd sporadically get into fitness me and my husband would go for a run but never like super into it I think I got once or twice I got super into it for like two, three weeks, maybe, I think three weeks and I'd like cave and I'd go back to like another six months and nothing. And then I'd see some infomercial and I'd get like excited like, oh yeah, I want to do that. I'm going to do, I'm going to do that starting Monday and it'd be like, you know, Wednesday. So I'm like, Monday I'll do that. And then Monday comes around and I got so busy and I'm like, mm, I don't really have time to do that. So next Monday. And so the years went on and on so eventually I started getting what you call like this little pudgy thing my in in my you know the midsection area the 
<laughs> not our favorite part as women. Um, so the middle section, and so my family would start a joke like every time after I ate, I looked like I was three months pregnant. So it was like, oh, is that finished eating? Oh, she's three months pregnant. And honestly, it was like a joke at first, and it was like laughing. I was like, oh, it'll go away after you know my food that I ate is processed. And so um, I didn't really think anything of it. And then the year started going by. So again, was being active sporadically, I was still, you know, what you'd call lean. And then eventually, I'd say probably by like 27, I started feeling like, like I have to do a change. Like I was feeling really like drained and I wasn't happy with the way that I looked and I wasn't you know physically like I literally go up like two floors of stairs and I'm like oh my gosh you can't breathe anything with that I'm so out of shape so I really felt like something has to change so in that year I decided to give up beer so I gave up beer and then also about a few years ago maybe like Five years ago, my husband came across an infomercial. Again, we we're up late at night. Um, and it was this guy talking about G bombs. You've maybe seen the infomercial. I'll put the link down below. So we started eating a lot more cleaner and a lot healthier. My husband got obsessed with going organic. And so we buy everything organic except for the meat because the meat is super pricey. So we're slowly transitioning to organic meat. And so we went organic about five years ago, but I was still caving to my chip and snack. I'm a big snacker and snack desires. Um, and so again, going back to about three years ago is when, almost three years ago is when I decided to give up beer. So I decided to give up beer because I was like, I don't want to have no beer belly. Um, again, not that I was like, we were super like drinking all the time or anything, but it was more that I wasn't being active and there was more contributing to my belly than just beer, but I just decided to give it up. Like that's something I decided, I'm like, I'm giving it up, it's out of my life. And so I stopped drinking beer. And so that year I really decided like, I need to get active. Like I get tired going over two flights of stairs, like something has to change in my life. So then I decided, um, to start doing T25 and this, and I started doing T25 and about three weeks in I injured my foot. I have a bad foot and so my injury came back up and so that made me stop. Like I tried to push through it and do it modified and I just couldn't so I said okay I'm gonna take a break and I'll get back to it. So another year went by and nothing happened. So I did try, you know, we started eating cleaner, I left beer and so, but I wasn't being active again. So about two years ago, I got really excited again and my mom got into fitness. So my mom and I got a gym membership together and I started going and so I was really excited at first and we were going together and then I stopped going. I'd say I stopped going and seriously like three months in. What happened was June came around, we always go on vacation in June, so then I left on vacation in June and I said, oh, I'll do it when I come back. And then eventually, I, after vacation, I never could get back in the group. And then my mom canceled her gym membership because she got a treadmill, so she was able to just exercise at home. So then I decided to cancel my gym membership because I was paying it for nothing. It was stupid. I paid it for like a whole year and I didn't go. I wasn't doing anything at home and just wasting money so it was literally ugh, it was dumb so again here i am feeling miserable then eventually i got like two or three people who asked me on social media i had uploaded some pictures and they said oh like when oh i didn't know you were pregnant when's your baby due and i was like omg like now it's not just happening after I eat and it's a silly little joke with my family. Now like people that I don't even talk to that much or just like my friends on social media think that I'm pregnant and no, I wasn't pregnant. So then I started feeling like really depressed and bad about myself and as women, you know, we're bombarded with all these images of how our body has to look and you know, abs and the looking up cute and perfect and so then, you know, that feeling when you look down and you just see are your like blubber hanging 
and I was like, oh no. And so I just felt, I started feeling really depressed and I just started feeling bad about myself. So then um, I'm just gonna fast forward because I just realized that I've been going on for like 10 minutes and I'm not getting to what changed. So eventually the biggest trigger point was one, I wanted to feel better about myself. So I just started, like I said, I, I was feeling bad about myself. I was feeling tired. I was feeling like just not like no energy. And I would remember that the, those times that I had committed for, you know, a week or two weeks or three weeks, how much um, energy that gave me and endorphins and how much better I felt about myself. So I was like, you know, I want that. But then the biggest pushing point, trigger point, was that last year I turned, oh, I hate saying my age, I can't believe I'm gonna say this on a vlog on YouTube, but I turned 30. <gasps> I said it. Yes, I turned 30. I'm gonna own it. I'm 30. Yes, I turned 30. And I started having like a freak out moment. Like, oh my gosh, I turned 30. So I started freaking out about wrinkles. Not that I hadn't freaked out about enough about like my skin. And I'll talk about my skin and acne struggles on another video. But I started freaking out like, oh my gosh, my hair. Oh my gosh, my face. Oh my gosh, my body. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I started freaking out. It was a special birthday because I turned 30 on a Saturday. My birthday is Independence Day for Mexico, which, voila, lo and behold, is not Cinco de Mayo. Independence Day for Mexico is September 16th. Yeah, girls, birthday. So, on uh, for my birthday last year, I did a big bash, like um, 30 and fabulous. And so I got really committed. So I started um, end of March, I decided. And then I started on my like mega ultra fitness journey. I was like, I'm gonna get to 30, my 30th birthday and I wanna feel good about myself. I wanna be feel good about be, being my own skin. And I just, I don't know, I just got this like super inspiration about it. So I started uh, T25 again. I realized you have to like know yourself, like what motivates you to do exercise? Is it doing it with a buddy? Is it going to the gym? Is it getting a trainer? Is it dancing? And I realized that mine was working out at home. That's what really motivated me. And so I started T25 again. This time I was successful. Um, when I finished the first round, if you're familiar with T25, there's a first 30 day round, it's called Alpha, and then the second 30 day round, it's called Beta. And so I finished the first one and you know that feeling like after you like work so hard to work out and then you go look at the mirror and I'm like, Ugh, I'm not looking any different. And so a week went by, two weeks went by, three weeks went by and I'm like, I'm not seeing any differences. And my husband's like, no, like just hold on, like just keep strong, keep going. But I was feeling good. I was feeling frustrated because I wasn't seeing physical differences, but I was feeling good. Like I had energy, I felt good about myself. And so I stayed committed. It wasn't, so again, mind you, I started in end of March, beginning of April. It wasn't until July that I realized a difference in my in myself and my body. And this was, so I think this was my second round of T25 because I did it back to back twice. I was on my second round of T25 when I finally realized, oh my gosh, like I can see the difference. I stayed committed. Honestly, like it gets hard. Like some days I didn't want to do it. Some days I'm like, I'm so sleepy, but I'm like, no, I must. I'm like a freak for checking off the next date on my workout that I successfully completed it. Um, and so some days I didn't, and so I'd have to repeat or redo or do double exercise on one day, but just staying committed. It's okay if it's not like perfect, but as long as you keep on moving forward. And so I stayed committed. And then I got like super mega ultra obsessed where I started adding um, more like more like ab exercise and but exercises and be in the treadmill. So I'd exercise two to three hours a day um, just because I wanted to make my goal for my 30th birthday. And yay, I make my goal for my 30th birthday. So it was super exciting. I had a great birthday. Like everybody could see the difference and I felt really good about myself. Um, but backtracking a little bit and, and on about, so again, I said I started like beginning of April, end of March, I'd say, 
beginning of May, I realized that I also, I, I wasn't super changing my eating habits. Like I said, I wasn't eating bad, but I wasn't eating great. And so I stopped having late night snacks with my husband. And also, um, I really was, decided to, you know, count what I was eating, how I was eating. So I started meal prepping and changing that. So I wanted to add that in. So fast forward back to my birthday. So my birthday was in September. Uh, one of my friends, so I was still doing my exercise because now I had, we were going on vacation in December. You'll learn that I love to go on vacations. We were going on family vacation in December. And now I had like a family vacation goal. And so I started, I, I still kept on that same regimen. With I, st I still doing T25, my treadmill, and then my extra ab workouts. And about, I'd say October, one of my friends introduced to me Arbonne. If you're not familiar with Arbonne, I'll put a link down below to her introduction. So shout out to my girl, Alyssa, to Arbonne. And there's this thing called the detox. And so I did an introdu introductory detox. I'm not gonna go into all the deta details. Basically it's a detox to like cleanse your whole system out of everything and then once you finish it, you slowly start introducing foods again to see what your body reacts to. And then the detox is no dairy, no alcohol, um, no meat, it's, it's very specific, no cheat, so no dairy products either. So it's very specific. Um, so I only did the introductory one, I really enjoyed it, and then I went back to, after I was done with the half one, I went back to like my regular eating, but I, I limited, after the, that half detox, I really limited what I was eating, so I was a lot more conscientious, like I, was, I started drinking just almond milk, I let go of coffee, I only do this, nat, like this, there's this powder called the Fizz in the Arbonne world and I really love the fizz and so I took out the coffee and I did that and then in fast forward I still kept on exercising after vacation I kind of took a little bit of hi hiatus in like January I was kind of sporadically doing exercises but starting February I started my routine again and I started um, another program in T25 called 80 Day Obsession. I'm sure some of you have heard of it with Adam Calabrese. So I'm currently on that and I'm on day 50. I've had to repeat certain weeks uh, twice because I didn't do it perfectly and I was anal about it. So I just decided to repeat the whole week. Beginning of March, I decided to do the Arbonne Detox, but this time do the full 30 days. So I did the whole 30 days of the Arbonne Detox and OMG, when I was done with the, now actually doing the 30 days as opposed to the two weeks, I totally felt the difference. Like the way my body is, the way my cravings are, like I'm not, I'm still a snacker, but I try to keep the healthy snacks. And I could tell that when I don't follow my diet to the T is when I'll be more anxious for snacks. But I don't crave coffee at all because before when I only did the two weeks, I was craving coffee. Now I'm not craving coffee at all. I'm not craving certain foods. And I've noticed because I suffer, I have gastritis, I have acid reflux, and I have heartburn. And I love hot food. Like I'm obsessed with hot food. I can be... I can be known for sitting down, having dinner, and eating eight chili serranos ocho chiles serranos in one sitting and I'm a masochist for hot food so I love hot food but because of my stomach conditions I've had to let go of like the acidy ones so I'm better with the natural chile so like Tabasco oh, the vinegar even like tapatio I love it um, like jalapeños and the vinegar I mean I love them like the little carrots were my favorite but because of the acid and the vinegar no bueno for my stomach so i uh, try to stay on like the natural chile so like i said green salsa guacamole chile serranos a mordidas yes i love those i started noticing what my stomach reacted to so i see my stomach reacts to like full milk my stomach doesn't like that um i 
um, processed meats. My stomach doesn't like that. So I've been able to realize what foods aren't good for me and you know, aren't helping me. And I just love it. Like now I look forward to my workout. Like it's not, you know, I finished T25, the, you know, 60 days of T25 and I'm done. It's not, I'm going to finish the 80 days of 80 day obsession and I'm done. It's, you know, it's, I'm saying yes to essentially a new form of a new form of living. Like I'm saying yes to a new lifestyle, a new form of eating. And it's not a dread, it's not a sacrifice because I feel amazing. Um, I have so much energy. I love, you know, I've always loved vegetables and stuff like that. So it was a little easier for me, but I just feel so much better about myself. And yeah, like I don't look like a supermodel and that's okay, but I feel good. I'm healthy. I have energy. I feel good about myself. And so, you know, you do you, you know what changes you need to make. For yourself to be healthy like there's no don't aim to be like oh I need to look like this girl I need to look like that girl or that girl in the magazine so those are like unrealistic expectations like the girl in the magazine doesn't even look like she herself doesn't even look like that because they photoshopped her and airbrushed her and made her look perfect so just do what you need to do to be healthy and to be comfortable in your own skin because you're beautiful, you know, like you're beautiful just the way you are and the way God created you. But you also want to be conscientious, like this is the only body, the only one body that God gave us. Like we are temples of the Holy Spirit. And so we want to be taking care of our temples. We want to be taking care of our bodies. So we want to be watching, you know, what are we eating? What are we consuming? We don't just want to be eating crap. And the other thing like one person said, uh, actually, one person said it, but now I'm realizing my mom said it too. And it was that they they wanted to take care of themselves and be strong and healthy so they could live a long lasting life. And then my mom said, um, and I'll, I'll share in another time. Oh, oh my gosh, I don't want to cry, but I'll share in another video as to why me and my husband don't have children yet. I'm not going to cry. Okay. Um, but my mom was like, oh, I'm going to exercise and I'm going to be healthy because I'm going to be alive and I want to see Lizette's kids and so you know that's what motivated her to change her lifestyle and to be healthy and to be active and exercise oh sorry like this was out of nowhere Whew. okay so that's what motivated her and that's what like pushed her to like I'm gonna take care of my body and I'm gonna be healthy and for me yeah it was my freak out moment like I'm entering my 30s um, but also you know I want to be healthy I want to be healthy for my future children when I conceive them and have a healthy pregnancy I want to you know be healthy to live a long lasting life next to my amazing husband and I just want to be healthy for me to feel good in my own skin to have energy to just feel you know to to take to feel good and to just take care of my only one body that nobody else can take care of but me. So I have to invest time into my body, invest time into me feeling good because I need to feel good and I need to have energy in order to do everything that I need to do. And you need to feel good about your body and you need to feel comfortable in your skin and your own skin to be able to do everything that you have to do. And again, don't pay attention to any like all those magazines or any tabloids about how you need to look because you need you do not need to look any certain way you just need to be happy and comfortable and healthy in your own skin and your own body so um that's a little bit about my fitness journey that went longer than i thought it would go i'll leave the link down below for the g bombs thing that i was talking about for the arbon and just thank you so much for listening i really really enjoy sharing with you guys i have exciting vlogs coming up my husband and i are gonna go to italy for our wedding anniversary so i'm gonna be excited to share with you our trip and to finally introduce to you my beloved prince that god blessed me with and just thank you so much um don't forget to hit like don't forget to hit subscribe if you're not subscribed yet and don't forget to comment down below let me know of any topics that you'd like to hear or let me know any questions that you have you are beautiful you are perfect and you are loved god bless <laughs>